Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Small Talks for Big Change, where we help simplify financial topics to help with your financial wellness. My name is Michelle Enriquez, Membership Development Manager here at Patelco Credit Union. Thanks, everyone, for tuning into the show today. It's hard to believe, but we're two seasons in, and we're at episode 25. And for this momentous occasion, we had to bring in none other than the Veronica Dangerfield, Patelco's beloved financial wellness educator and overall financial cheerleader. Welcome, welcome, Veronica. Thank you for gracing us in the studio. Thank you. It's such an honor to be with you, Michelle. And talk about life, girl. Well, we do it so much off camera, don't we? Yeah. So we're just bringing it to the studio today and 25 episodes in, and we haven't even broached the topic of retirement. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it, but we're going to bring it in hard today. Okay, so my Mm -hmm. friend, without giving your age away, is it safe to say that you're thinking about retirement? Well, everybody should be thinking about it. In fact, I cannot not think about it. I am very privileged to be a gorgeous 63-year-old. Yes. And I actually have to make my age a part of my passwords because I cannot (laughs) keep that number in my head. (laughs) Most of the time I put in 36, but you know. (laughs) You look and act 30. You've got the spirit of a 36-year-old. Let's put it that way. Oh, Reality is self-created, and I am delusional. (laughs) Well, I, too, am thinking about retirement. I think about retirement all the time, but whether or not I'm prepared to actually do the thing or not is a different story. So today I want to get all the tips, and we're not going to get technical, right? Neither you or I are licensed financial advisors, and we do recommend that when you are thinking about retirement, you do sit down with a tax advisor or a licensed financial professional. But today we are going to talk in just general terms about some of the things that we might be anxious about, whether you're in my life stage, since I'm so much younger, I'm not. But you may be nearing closer to retirement planning, so we're just going to talk it through. So I'm going to kick us off. I'm going to share you what Google will feed you if you search pre-retirement Okay. And then we can compare some of the things that are on your mind. Sound good? Oh, sounds wonderful. Okay, here we go. Number one, if you Google the most top of mind things for near retirees and healthcare is the top, is that one of your top three? Yes, not even just healthcare, but when you go on Medicare, they make you divorce your teeth, your eyes, <laughs> and chiropractic. You know what I mean? So I don't understand why they wouldn't include that because right now my medical care includes my my teeth and my my eyes and you know I wear glasses yeah and they can be very expensive so that's always a little bit daunting yeah we were reading some of the notes in preparation for this I had no idea so the report on Google shares that reports estimate that the average healthy couple age 65 today We'll need close to 390000 to cover health care expenses and yeah. retirement. Have you, like, thought about a number that that's going to equate to? Well, I started doing yoga so that I could get up out of a chair, <laughs> and I assiduously go to the dentist. It's kind of like with my house. I was thinking about retiring, and I got a new roof, and, you know, I got a new air conditioning system. So in preparation for that, can you overly prepare for med- for medical costs? It's daunting. Yeah. I think I have one account that I think that I was going to say exclusively for medical, but my revenge is I'm going to do the best I can to stay healthy. And taking care of yourself. Yep, yeah. That's good Cause, advice. Because I went through a great divorce. I'm a single woman now. Yeah. And everything falls. The avalanche falls right into my big <laughs> responsible lap. My big, responsible, capable lab. But I'm always aspirational around, you know, staying healthy. My mom lived a long time. My grandmother lived a long time. Yeah. So for you, it's about prevention. What can I do today to help mitigate some of those potential health care costs? I feel like a lot of it comes down to luck. So you're talking about, um, you know, hereditary things, but, you know, luck has got to come into play. But you know what? I had to tell you something. I read a study. This is going to sound kind of weird, but I read a study that if you had a baby after the year, after 40 years, 
And I have to tell you, I was a Miss Reproduction for 30 years. I mean, I have my children are 12 years apart from each other that I have a tendency to live to 100. Um, if you have a child after If you 40. have a child after 40, I had a, uh, my last child was 10 days before my 41st birthday. Mm. And in fact, I met a young person and she's 45 and we both have children the same age. Wow. <laughs> so with that said, if I'm going to live to 100 and I retire in my 60s, that's another whole mm-hmm. 30 years. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do? Right. And you can't fully prepare financially for that. 390000 is the figure that they give us, the average figure, but that's so much dependent on the person, the medical history, the any kind of health luck you may have. So there's no, there's no one answer for everyone, but preventative measures is... Have you ever took, taken one of the longevity tests? No. You can do that on Google. You can take a longevity test and they ask you, you know, do you smoke? Do you exercise? They even ask you, how many vegetables do you consume a week? Oh, my. So, and it'll give you a number. And yeah. that number, and it says, if you've already made it this long, you know, being yeah. 60, since I've already made it, I have a really good chance of making it so much longer. And so I'm making contracts with all the young people that that I run into because when I get old and see now, they're going to have to be on the schedule. Well, we're only like <laughs> two, three minutes in, and you've already given your age away. I was trying to keep no, it general, no, but no. you already... I'm pushed. proud of my age. You know, it took a lot to get here. Okay, so speaking of age and living longer than we expect, outliving your retirement income was the second biggest worry, according to Google. They go on to say only 48% of Americans have attempted to calculate how much money they'll need in retirement. And 61% fear that they're going to run out of money. That's more than half. Yeah. And they, they fear poverty more than dying. Um, how for you and for you, do you even wrap your head around what that number should be? You know, I try to feel positive about it because I don't know if it's if it's like pure propaganda to keep us in fear, because mm. it seems like a lot of the financial information that is consumable out there is based on fear. I agree. We we're just in a college classroom yep. and we're talking to kids about planning for the future. And, you know, the end goal is to retire as early as possible. Right. So pad your nest egg now. But we got to talking about Social Security and trying to ease their fears about, you know, the fact that it might not be there in retirement. But I feel like we've been hearing that forever. We've been hearing it forever. And retirement, if you just retire on Social Security, you're almost guaranteed to be under the poverty line. So it's just critical that we still plummet it in their head that it's the Social Security would just be a supplement, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe for a couple of good vacations a year. Because you know what my plans are. Old Lady Dangerfield is going to be an international world traveler. We're not going to be able to keep up. We can hardly keep up with you now. No luggage, (laughs) just a passport (laughs) and a fat credit card. I believe that 100%, whether whether or not you've got the money to do it I am so committed to this. And because I'm committed to this, I have to really utilize my younger retirement years because studies say that maybe when I'm 72 or basically 82, I'm not going to have the energy or the capacity. Yeah. So, so, so or maybe I that am. health, like we were talking about in point one, going back to luck. You know, what if something happens and you're not able to do that? So, maximize. yeah, be properly insured and saved up right. and prayed up. <laughs> okay. All right. Outliving your retirement income. You and I did a, a webinar earlier in the year about building generational wealth. Yeah. And assets came up in that conversation where might you be thinking for either younger people or you now nearing and thinking about retirement like where does assets come into play and where does that kind of fit in the calculation for what you think you're going to need well a part of me is really happy about the gig economy because I know this is going to sound weird but I decided to make my house my husband and I made a, a small apartment. So if I had to have somebody come in, they could live there. Yeah. And I think about how many ways that I can utilize that as an income source so that I'm not just reliant on 
Social Security. I don't have any other pensions that I've worked for. I've just done the, the 401ks, and I've done those pretty aggressively. Mm-hmm. So, but I still think about it, you know, because with inflation, it's eating away at my savings. So I have to make sure, because they say when you get older, you have to, you know, do an, a, a diversify in a different way. But I'm going to live so long, I think that I need to remain aggressive because even if I retire, let's say at 67, I still have another 25 years to live. Yeah. So all of those are considerations, mm-hmm. but I don't want to be in scarcity and I don't want to make decisions based on fear. But when I do the research, fear is all out there. But I have to rely on knowing that I'm not an exorbitant person. When I travel, I travel very inexpensively. And I have three brilliant children that I have indoctrinated them to support their mother. When I get yeah. Time. Wait, but this room is really for them to come back to. And is it a secret hope that one of them comes back to live in? Well, if you are a parent right now, you know it's a revolving door. Yeah. Um, one is getting ready to go to, to college, but one is also coming back home. But she's the one that cooks. So I'm really excited. Nice. Okay, so the Veronica Dangerfield bed and breakfast that I could rent out. But you're talking about making assets work for you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I think that, you know, I tell sometimes when I teach that lack of income is a creativity problem. And that all of us should have more than one source. And that if we understand how talented we are, we can figure it out. So that you're making money when you sleep. I mean, you got the internet that never goes to bed. So it's going to require us to be a little bit more creative Mm -hmm. and thoughtful about sources of income and not be into scarcity because it's really hard once you've been inoculated to save your entire life, then all of a sudden start spending. Yeah. It's, Yeah. It's almost like impossible. Yeah. You know. And then in prep too, I hate to bring up the T word, I didn't even think about taxes in prep for this conversation so tell me where your head's at because it came up number three in the top four most you know things are worried about what i don't need to follow that up with anything taxes are stressful in general but what about taxes so related so you think if you have so qualified funds are when your 401k when you have money in your 401k and you don't pay the taxes because you believed in the future that you would be in a lower income bracket but it does not happen all of the all the time. So I have three quarters maybe that are non-tax where the government is is on the other side of the thing saying it's time to pay me. But I also um, have the 401k and it has a Roth component in it. Nice. The Roth component is the hallelujah day, you know, yeah. because that money and they say on the hierarchy of taking money out and this is just personally for me you take your Roth money out first and then you take your tax money out but anyway okay wait so your Roth is your pre is your, pre-tax your yeah the Roth the is the money that you get in and you don't you you don't get any tax deduction okay. and your but, traditional is just the opposite and the tra- traditional is just just the opposite okay. but the Roth is even better because not only does it the, your contributions, you've already paid taxes on it, but it grows tax-free. Right. So all of the all of the dividends and stuff are not taxed. Yeah. And we teach this in the classroom, right? The difference between a Roth IRA and traditional IRA, it just never dawned on me that everybody's got multiple types of investments and not all of them are the pre-tax variety. So you right. got to kind of write everything out and figure out which is which. And then yeah. for the ones that are not pre tax That's why you have to have one of a financial advisor, because there is a hierarchy and there's ways that you you can do it so that you pay less taxes. But it's not intuitive. You know, it just doesn't make sense. And and it's actually I think it's a little bit more sophisticated than what I could pick up on my own. Yeah. You know, because I mean, all of these decisions. Have you heard of decision fatigue? I'm telling you. I'm a mom. You're a mom. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know that pretty well. Just I haven't started to broach this retirement thing. 
But when did you when did you finally figure out that hey, I should probably talk to some either a tax advisor or a, reti- a financial advisor well, regarding? Well, the thing the- is, is that I'm circling the wagon. You know what I mean? I'm afraid to pull the trigger because I know that I'm going to live so long, and I really do love my job. I mean, it fills me with life, and I can support um, communities, and I have fun teaching, but also the opportunity to have time freedom. Mm -hmm. And I want to live on an island for six weeks just to figure out whether I like living on an island. Yeah. I want to have the beach as my back door. Yeah. But well, and I work with you. I know you have limited PTO, and that bucket's running that dry. Bucket. I mean, in fact, <laughs> you guys, I keep my PTO at zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know I that. am, and I have a lot. But in order to experience more, because that's what money's about, right? It's about having the tools so that you can live how you want to, yeah. travel when you get ready, and have some financial peace. Yeah. You know what I mean? I keep saying to myself, you know, if you if you have money and it's just sitting around doing nothing, what good is it? Yeah. It's like monopoly money. Yeah. But if you can use it to support an organization, take the kids on a vacation, yeah. travel solo. You don't even have grandkids yet. So when those grandkids Oh, my come gosh. To I'm going to lose my mind. I know. I already know that I'm going to have to have EAP on speed dial. Yep. I'm going to have to work because I'm going to need a full-time And maybe capsule. that's where all your money's going to go. I mean, there's a lot to be seen there, too. But I'm hearing you also talk about, you know, I'm of age to retire, but I love what I'm doing. I still have energy. This work that I'm doing still fills my bucket. I don't want to be bored either. So when we think about the right time, The fourth thing that came up in this biggest worries about retirement is market swings and whether or not the economy is going to be in the best time for me to retire and take advantage of the highest rates or whatever. So in your mind, you might be thinking next five years or whatever, because I've got energy and I still want to work, but I also maybe want to maximize the best like market time to retire. Are you even thinking about that? And the thing is, is that market timing, I think that it's impossible. You know, the, the, the market went up during the pandemic. Yep. And That's people made a lot of money. And if I retire in a down market, I probably won't recover that money again. If I retire in a up market, uh, it'll be a good idea for me. But you know what? When it's time for me to go, I don't think I'm going to have to think about that. Because what? how much can I can control? Right. I can't control it. And... I can always work. When I retire, my brilliance is not going to be subtracted. Yep. <laughs> yep. And you create your own PTO. <laughs> you know, I create read, my but... own PTO. I still love to read. I still, there's so many things that I want to learn how to do. So, so I'm, I'm going to retire to still teach. Yeah. I'm going to always be a teacher. Yeah. Because I love young people. Whether I'm going to do a, an informalized, structured corporate world uh, don't think so yeah my mom has been talking about retiring for the last eight years I want to say she just turned 70 like just turned 70 oh, last her week heart. and her biggest top priority was maximizing my 401k I've built this whole thing my entire life I'm going to make sure the day I retire is at the maximum point it could be and I feel like it's held her back the last eight mm-hmm. years like it's been this cause and let's think about the last five eight years too with the pandemic and everything how up and down that has been so it just kind of added to the stress of everything but she admitted she hasn't been able to enjoy the last leg of the retirement yeah. because of that so I mean everybody's got their own you know needs and their own top three or top four if you will but for her the stress of the perfect timing related to economy and market, it just kind of ruined her whole yeah. experience. And she's still kind of going back and forth with it. But I think she's at the point where I'm tired. Like, I think it's finally time, no matter what the market looks like on May next year, or what the date keeps changing. It's May next year now. But on May next year, no matter what is going on, a recession, whatever, is going to be my day. And sometimes you got to draw that line in the sand. Well, there's this book called Die With Zero. And it says that you have to really optimize the, the, that when you're young in retirement. Because I just went to Japan. And we walked, I don't know, five to six hours a day. 
and you're still recovering. And I'm, and you know, no, but but because I'm consistent with this, and I insist on staying healthy so that I can travel, you know, that is why I want to optimize my 60s and do the things that I wanted to do because, you know, life isn't guaranteed, yeah. and I'm not going to take time for granted or my health for granted. So it's now a clock. Get on the plane yesterday. It is now a clock. It's now a clock. So regardless of what the market is doing, I only have a limited time to live on this precious earth. Girl, I want to have fun. Yeah. I want to have great experiences with my children. Yeah. I want them to tell stories about me for a long time because I'm prone to spontaneous yeah. And behavior. this is your priorities. Right? You know what you're confident as to what your priorities are. So maybe your conversation with that financial advisor, with that tax person, that's where your benchmark is. This is where I'm starting. This is what I want. So let me work backwards and get financially where I need to be to meet that. For a hundred years. Because <laughs> I'm going to be around bugging people for a hundred years. My grandma lived to be almost 95, so wow. I'm, I'm there with you, too. Wow, you better pump up that 401k, girl. This is why we're doing this episode. <laughs> I need you to tell me. Hell, let me do this. Okay, we had, a bu- we had about 20 other things that are kind of top of mind when thinking about retirement. We're already at podcast time. We could be here forever. I know you and I, but what, what other one thing are you is, is I just priority think list? that um, we can't rely on our feelings about our finances. We have to have greater values, having experiences, doing all the things that you want to do. I think we need to get out of the fear because the fear is just suffocating. But I don't want to have any regrets on my deathbed. I want to be able to go to Jamaica and do the limbo. I want to be in Tibet praying with the monks and I want to really um, live the life of my dreams because of the sacrifices that I made in my past. So when it's time to retire, I don't want to get bogged down in the finances. I need to do the stuff now. If I need to create more income, I can. You'll figure it out. And I will, and I'll figure it out. But I don't want to go down in scarcity Yeah. because it's so easy to do. And there's so much pressure around it. But I just want to have a fun life with lots of adventures, spending money to enrich the life of my family, my friends, and my community. Well, I see now why you're doing that yoga. It's for this limbo. You haven't been to Jamaica yet? I I have been to Jamaica a couple of times. But you haven't done the limbo? I have not done the limbo. And I want to be able to get up off the floor once I fall down. I love that so much. All right, yoga, limbo, living life with no worries about planning so we can set up for that. And we mentioned that we're not financial advisors, but we do have licensed financial advisors here at Patelco. If you're interested in speaking with one of those licensed financial advisors, you can schedule a complimentary consultation with them to just help understand whether you're on the right path to retiring comfortably. Um, You can find their information at patelco.org. Also, Veronica and I invite you to email us at webinars at patelco.org if you want to find out more about yoga or Jamaica <laughs> or any or travel or Cheap travel. travel. Yeah, definitely hit us up. But we're also interested in hearing what you want to hear about yes. on future podcasts. Veronica Dangerfield is also the host of our webinars, and we do two per month, although we're taking a break in June. But we'd love to hear from our audience as to what you'd like us to talk about next how we can help with your financial wellness so veronica this was a great long time coming episode 25 25 that's how old i am (laughs) not why (laughs) that's how old i am that's a a coincidence we're the same age (laughs) thank you for yeah it is a privilege to be of service and i and i hope this gave our audience a little bit more confidence that you have to be brave and courageous to do anything big but this will absolutely be worth it. Yeah. Live no the stress. life of your dreams. No stress. Let us help along the way. You know, nothing you should have to do by yourself. So let us know how we can help type of deal. Like always. Absolutely. Right. Thank you for being with us today. Episode number 25. It had to be you. 25. 25. <laughs> that concludes today's episode of Small Talks for Big Change, where we help simplify financial topics to help with your financial wellness. 
We'll see you next time. Patelco Credit Union is insured by NCUA. Thanks for watching. Want more financial advice? Make sure you watch the next video here. And hit that subscribe button here.